Sparking Zero hype train is in full force. And with only two days to go, I've made a top five list of the best and worst characters you could play in rank. This list does not have casual in mind because I'm going to take into account their DP cost. So if you're playing casual, play who you want, bro. I do not care. I'm just a sweaty rank player. Don't even worry about it. But yeah, let's get right into the list. We'll start off with worst. So the way I'm going to rank this is that number five is something that I could probably recommend, but I wouldn't recommend it. And number one is probably the worst pick you could ever choose when starting out. So at number five, we have Whis. I know what you're thinking. Calm down. It's going to be okay. I'm not saying that Whis is bad, but his DP cost is incredibly high at 10. And he's not a character with any transformations, so there's no other way you can lower this DP cost. If you don't know what DP is, it's basically the number of points you get to build a team. You get a total number of 15 DP, and each character has their own unique DP value. So like I'm saying, Whis has 10, so you're going to have barely any room to build the rest of your team. If I'm being completely honest, after you pick Whis, you can probably only pick one or two more characters, depending on their cost. So unless you're an absolute Whis god, I do not recommend picking him. But the reason why he's at the edge of this list is because he does have that infinite auto dodge. So maybe you can take advantage of that. But aside from his DP cost, Whis looks like an incredibly strong character. It's just a shame that you're not really going to be able to pick him unless you're revolving the team around him. But you never know, maybe one day when you get in the lab with Whis, you might actually be able to pull off that 1v5 clutch. But yeah, that's just my reasoning. So that's Whis at number 5. At number 4, we got his partner in crime, Beerus. Now Beerus is the exact same reason, basically. His cost is 10 dp but the reason why he's lower on this list is because he doesn't have that auto dodge i have no idea if beerus is going to be absolutely broken in this game he might be doing some absurd damage but i'm not gonna lie if you're first starting out and you only have like three characters you're already going to be at a disadvantage someone already has five but unless your beerus game is top notch i don't recommend picking him but yeah that's beerus at number four and number three i'm gonna be grouping up a, a lot of characters which i probably shouldn't do for the sake of the integrity of the list but i really don't care and that is any fully evolved fusion character like super saiyan blue gogeta or super saiyan blue Blue Vegito. These characters have a cost of 10 DP, and it's insane to me that you can pick base Goku and base Vegeta for 5 DP each, and then in game, you get the added bonus of gaining your health back when you fuse. So if you're hopping into ranked, there's generally no point in picking a fully evolved fusion, you're generally just throwing. I think the only one that's kind of worth it is Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, because I'm pretty sure Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta is his own character, and you can't transform into him, and he costs 8 DP, and if you combine that with uh, GT Goku, the DP cost comes to 13, or Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is, is only 10 but hey if you're a big gogeta fan i guess i can't really blame you but yeah that's uh fully evolved fusions at number three number two we have master roshi now listen this guy is the go trust me don't get me wrong and his dp cost is only two but he has a certain gimmick which I'm pretty sure is going to hold him back tremendously. And that is the fact that he's a grounded character. This means he can't fly at all and he has to stay on the ground no matter what. Unfortunately, they made Master Roshi a gimmick character. I'm pretty sure these grounded characters are going to be one of the worst characters in the game. Like genuine low tiers. And that's why if we move on to number one, the worst pick you could ever pick in rank is Mr. Satan. Now I know what you're thinking. Mr. Satan, a DP cost of one? What a steal. I can finally use Whis with Mr. Satan, my goodness. But this man's super attack literally gives the opponent priority. There's basically no way of damaging the opponent outside of his super attacks. And I think he's literally there just for the memes. Which is totally fine, but if you're a new player and you're hopping into rank with Mr. Satan, you're gonna get cooked. And there's no other way around it. It's really unfortunate too because his animations do look really good. But hey, that won't stop me from playing him. I'm hopping in one's day one with Mr. Satan. I'm gonna cook. Trust me guys, trust me. Those are the top 5 characters I least recommend you to play if you're gonna play rank. Let's move on to the top 5 of best. Number 5 we have Saiyan Saga Vegeta. With a low DP cost of 4, I feel like this man is going to be a menace, especially for new players. But why? Because he's got that giant form. Now I'm not going to say giant characters are going to be broken, but they definitely seem like they have a lot of good attributes and can be good for new players. Because they can't be staggered or grabbed, and if the character you're facing isn't above the power level of Super Saiyan 3, most attacks won't even affect them. Any grab slash melee supers, they're immune to it. They might be slower and have bad hit speed, I think they make up for it with the damage they do. So yeah, don't sleep on Saiyan Saga Vegeta. At number 4, I'm going to group together characters again. But I'm thinking both Krillin and Yamcha are pretty decent options for your team. You think about it, you're going to have your Gokus and Vegetas, which cost like 10 DP as a whole. It will not hurt to put your boy Krillin and Yamcha on the team for free DP. Plus characters like Krillin have Solar Flare, which can lead into combos. And you just got to rep your Earthling boys, come on now. But yeah, I feel like if you learn some of these characters, they can be seriously strong. Especially Krillin. Don't sleep on my Goat Krillin. Yeah, 
let's crinkle in the armchair at number four. At number three, I'm actually going to group a pairing and let's go to Nin Trunks. I know you might be asking why these two, and that's because their DP cost is relatively low at four at base. We all know the real reason why I picked these guys, and that's because of fusion. If you don't know in game, if you fuse, you actually gain back a decent chunk of HP. So if your go to Nin Trunks are low and you fuse, you actually gain your HP back. I think that's going to be massive in ranked. And of course, having the power boost of a fusion is going to be insane as well. So yeah, let's go to Nin Trunks at number three. And number two, once again, I am grouping characters. I bet you guys love me for this. But it is the Ginyu Force. I feel like in ranked, it's going to be quite rare to see a full team of five. And the Ginyu Force exactly hits 15. So right off the bat, you're going to have five characters at your disposal, which I think is pretty massive. And of course, the Ginyu Force all have very unique movesets, like Goldo stopping time and Jason Burt's tag attack. Plus, you have Ginyu's body change, so hell, you might even be able to snag a fusion. I just think the Ginyu Force is going to be hella slept on when the game comes out. But yeah, that's the Ginyu Force at number two. Number one, I'm just going to keep up with the theme of pairing people. It's going to be Goku and Vegito. Literally your bread and butter of every Dragon Ball game. They have about 6 million transformations. They can fuse, and they also have 6 million transformations. Basically, if you play these two, you're going to have a lot of fun. And at the end of the day, that's what we want in Sparking Zero. I don't think I even have to explain why they're at number one. They just have so many options, and they're probably just going to be broken anyway, because they are the main characters. But yeah. There's my top 5 worst and best characters that I recommend for rank in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. And at the end of the day, this list was just made for fun. I generally don't even know what I'm talking about. But when rank comes out, play whoever the hell you want. Just make sure you're having fun in this game, because this game looks peak and I just cannot wait. But yeah, let me know who you recommend or don't recommend in the comments below. And like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.